Hello everyone, my name is Davi Wenzel and thank you for joining my talk on ways to upgrade your career with ethical hacking. For background information, I'm currently heading up the Cyber Forensic Investigation Team at, at ABSA Group in Johannesburg, South Africa and I'm an advisory board member of EC Council's Certified Ethical Hacking and Computer Hacking Forensic Investigators programs. Today's journey starts with reference to the NIST NICE framework and touches on EC Council's CEH course and the value of certifications in general. Although I'll be using CEH as a course example, I aim to show with reference to the NICE framework that there are numerous and diverse job opportunities available in the cybersecurity industry. The job listed in the slides uh, were obtained from LinkedIn by using CEH as a search term. The many different uh, available roles highlights the security community's high regard for CEH as a certification. It should be noted that the NICE mission is to energize and promote a robust network and an ecosystem of cybersecurity education, training, and workforce development. In the next few slides, I'll be discussing the NICE framework's goals in more detail. There are three NICE goals listed, namely accelerate, nurture, and guide. The accelerate goal addresses the shortage of skilled cybersecurity workers, the Nature Goal strengthens education and training across the ecosystem to emphasize learning, measured outcomes, and diversity of the cybersecurity workforce. The Guide Goal is there to support employers in order to address market demands and enhance recruitment, hiring, development, and retention of cybersecurity talent. The NICE framework is published by the National Institute of Standards and Technology, also known as NIST, in NIST Special Publication 800-181. The framework provides educators, students, employees, training providers, and policymakers with a systematic and consistent way to organize the way we think and talk about cybersecurity work and to identify the knowledge, skills, and abilities needed to perform cybersecurity tasks. The framework is a central reference to help employers build a capable and ready cybersecurity workforce. The aim of discussing the different NICE cybersecurity workforce categories, speciality areas, and work roles is to highlight the diversity of available careers in cybersecurity. There, is, there are seven cybersecurity workforce categories, 33 speciality areas, and 52 work roles. In the next few slides, I'll be running through the different speciality areas to identify the available work roles. Just keep in mind that during the course of your career, you would probably have the option to laterally move between different categories as well as speciality areas. For instance, you can start off as an analyst and move to different respond to and move to incident response or even awareness training. This flexibility illustrates the dynamic nature of cybersecurity. There are plenty of role options available. The securely provision category has seven speciality areas and 11 work roles. Some of the speciality area maps to more than one work, work role, for instance, risk management and software development. The work roles on the right column are expanded on in the NICE framework to include specific knowledge, skills, and abilities required to perform a set of tasks. The Oversee and Govern category has six speciality areas and 14 work roles. 
It is worth noting that there are four work roles listed under the program pro project management and acquisition speciality area. It is interesting to see the work role diversity in cybersecurity that even caters for cyber legal advisors. The operate and maintain category consists of six speciality areas and seven work areas. The roles listed are mostly aligned to traditional IT speciality fields, uh, such as DBAs and sysadmins. Those IT skills are therefore still valid and valuable for cybersecurity application. The protect and defend category consists of four speciality areas and four work roles. In my opinion, demand for these roles may remain high, with more and more large enterprises establishing their own in-house capabilities and SMEs outsourcing these services. The analyze category consists of five speciality areas and seven work areas. The need for threat analysts and intelligent roles has increased exponentially over the past few years. This adaptability illustrates that cybersecurity roles would keep evolving to respond to new TTPs, that is tactics, techniques, and procedures used by threat actors. The collect and operate category consists of three speciality areas and six work roles. Three speciality areas and six work roles. The investigate category consists of two speciality areas and three work roles. This is my main area of expertise, and I had the privilege to work in various roles in digital forensics within law enforcement and the corporate environments where I was involved in numerous cyber investigations over the past 15 years. Kudos to Henry Yang for compiling this map of the cybersecurity domains. This is version two of Henry's map and it provides an accurate overview of not just the primary domains, but also of Charles subdomains. This map is available for download from LinkedIn as reference below. Although not an area or role specific, this map validates the NICE framework with referencing the vast number of different areas within cybersecurity. The primary do domains are listed as security architecture, career development, framework and standards, physical security, risk assessment, governance, threat intelligence, user education, and security operations. I recommend that you familiarize yourself with the domains and subdomains mapped here, and keep in mind that a certification like CEH would be advantaged by spanning across a number of these cybersecurity domains. When exploring cybersecurity career paths, I stumbled on cyberseek.org. They have an innovative pathway option available on their website that maps roles as depicted in the slide. Roles are divided into feeder, entry level, mid level, and advanced level categories. As an example, the highlighted penetration and vulnerability role maps to all associated roles from feeder. To advanced level. The highlighted role lists 13,753 job openings and notes the average salary as 103,000 US dollars. In the next example, the highlighted cyber manager administrator role maps to the feeder role as depicted in the slide. The highlighted role lists 15,993 job openings and the average salary is displayed as $105,000. The 
this amount is just $2,000 more than the penetration and vulnerability rule mentioned in the previous slide. It is interesting to note that pay differences between the different levels are marginal. And it would not be surprising to find some mid-level specialist roles earning more than advanced level positions. In the next example, the highlighted subsecurity architect role maps to the feeder roles as depicted in the slide. The highlighted role lists 5,857 job openings and the average salary is displayed as 133,000 US dollars. The salary is the highest of all the roles listed here and is obviously in very high demand at the moment. But please keep in mind that money is not a primary motivator for job satisfaction. So do I really need a cybersecurity certification? This question is answered by a global knowledge report of IT skills and salaries that confirms 85% of IT professionals have at least one certification. So the question begs, how many cybersecurity certifications do you need to secure a job or be promoted sooner than your peers? According to an IDC survey conducted in 2019, people holding certifications got promoted sooner. The graph indicates the obvious value of at least two certifications and that the real value only starts tapering off from four certifications onwards. It is therefore in your best interest and of your career growth to obtain multiple jobs uh, specific certifications. So what does the cybersecurity job market looks like? The displayed LinkedIn cybersecurity job search results were divided into a period of four-year experience blocks. The results show strong demand for candidates uh, from with uh, zero to eight years work experience. As mentioned earlier, your IT work experience and certifications lays the groundwork for career progression within cybersecurity. The next few uh, slides show LinkedIn results mapped to specific job roles in relation to the number of years work experience. The zero to four years work experience block returned the listed entry mid-level roles. These roles span from network security engineer right down to cybersecurity analyst roles. LinkedIn search results for four to eight years work experience maps to the listed mid to senior level job roles. These roles span from senior security consultant to cyber security analyst level three at the bottom. Whereas LinkedIn search results for eight to 12 years work experience maps to the listed senior level job roles. Just the following three roles were identified. The next few slides show LinkedIn results when work experience is mapped to specific skills. I'm not going into any detail here as the listed skills are self-explanatory. I will pause for a few seconds on this slide. It is expected that uh, you obtain these skills within zero to four years work experience in cybersecurity. Skills listed here should be obtained within four to eight years work experience in cybersecurity.
the skills listed here should be obtained within eight to 12 years work experience in cybersecurity. The talk about ethical hacking would not be complete if EC Council CEH certification is not mentioned. This program was incepted in 2003 and is currently in its 10th version. It is noteworthy that link LinkedIn search results for CEH returned a total of 6,315 6, available jobs and therefore justifies its status as a sought after certification. I will provide an overview of the CEH program over the next few slides. The ethical hacking career path starts with core foundations originating from the Certified Network Defender curriculum. Once that is mastered, you can proceed to CEH and its practical exam. The path then advances to the Certified Security Analyst and associated practical exam before moving on to the expert level of licensed penetration tester. The CEH curriculum is ever evolving and in its 10th, 10th version, new modules such as vulnerability and IoT hacking were added to adapt to the ever-changing cybersecurity landscape. Another critical com component is the focus on emerging attack vectors, such as cloud computing, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. The course is 100% uh, NAS uh, framework compliant. Um, it covers uh, the latest where it does uh, include my way analysis and it's extremely hands-on. There are multiple lab uh, simulations uh, that emulates real real-time environments um, and it obviously covers the latest hacking tools. This slide summarizes the EC Council CEH program and it can be downloaded from the URL listed below. The schools provides the same advanced hacking tools and techniques used by hackers and cybersecurity professionals. Another key component of the course is the 140 practical lab exercises that mimics real world scenarios. I just want to emphasize that CEH is aimed at a wide audience and it's a great way to start or enhance your career journey in cybersecurity. As listed, there are numerous training delivery options available. Self-study and live online training would be preferred during this current global COVID-19 pandemic. The AHO, however, masterclass and uh, training partner options available. In closing, I urge you to research all available cybersecurity courses and certifications in order to identify the best cybersecurity certification to validate the objectives of your specific job role. Obtaining the right certification will demonstrate that you are capable and ready to be part of the cybersecurity workforce. Here with uh, two references listed to set you off on the right path. Thank you for attending this presentation and I wish you a pleasant journey in your cybersecurity career. Thank you.